Well, welcome to my apartment. My guy Mech is here. Wait, I don't know. Oh, sure. Oh, no, yeah. sorry, right. It's good. So, um, <laughs> Can you the other him? day, the other day, right? Um, Bianca tried to double team me with uh, D Dot on pa- what is it called? Pastelis? Pastelitos, pa- also pa- known as empanadas. Now y'all switch it. It's okay. So I do know what empanadas is. I didn't know what Pastelitos. Pastelitos is, right? So I didn't know what that was, right? I didn't know what that was. So she decided to, you know, this is my neighbor. So she decided to bring some some overcooked for mm-hmm. for us. And um, you felt it was very tasty. Everyone. It was my third one. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, no, they're, they're fantastic. Because you haven't been hungry? No, because they're really, really good. Wow, son. Like, I try to do something nice. You said you never had it. I don't know what it is. I never had it. So I made them. And you over here trashing me. But I didn't ask you to make them, though. You decided no. to make them on your own. That's what friends do. That's what friends do. That's to make something do. on their own? Yeah. Friends friends don't have to be asked. They, they see the need. They feel the need. Your need? Mm-hmm. I didn't need. Any. Well, you needed to try a good empanada. No, she I felt. needed to try... Pasteli, what you call it? Pastelitos. Pastelitos. <laughs> We're not going to get no, that. No, but, but that's just how he is. Though. You, he'll complain that people don't do anything nice for him. And then when you do something nice for him, he didn't ask. Anyway, that's fine. I will never do something nice for you again. How about that? That's not true. That's good. It you'll never do something make nice. the no. Pastelitos for me you'll, ever again. You'll do something nice You're for me. You're being disrespectful. I appreciate that. You know that. the name. I just said that, Patanelli, right? Patelitos. Oh, do you know hey. what that? Do you know what that is? I'm good. I'm cool with empanadas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, come on, you act like this is what you call. I stick with the good old China man. Yeah, well, that MSG is fantastic. Yeah, Moving that's on. fine. Good. I'll, that's I'll, why your stomach be bloated. I'll take those. Yeah. I'll take those. When you when you when you're in the mood. I got you. Yeah. Yes. Five. I'll bring them over to my expert opinion because apartment five H doesn't appreciate it. That's, that's what I'll fine. Do. Oops. I'm Can't good. wait. I will. Yeah, that's probably somebody from over there texting you now. Probably. Yeah. Hello. I got I got y'all some empanadas. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Mecca, what's up, man? Yo, Mecca, what's up, a little baby, man? Why oh, he's in trouble? Yeah, what happened? What's going on? What's going on? I wasn't there when he got in trouble. Wait a minute. What? What? Do, what do you mean he's in trouble? What's up? Isn't he? What the tour? You mean him canceling certain? I'm talking about with the tour and stuff. Oh, you oh, heard about uh, you heard no, about no, him no. getting jammed up? No, no. I'm, oh, you know what? You said little baby. I was thinking a little dirt. No, no, I'm talking about little baby. Yeah, no, my fault. I, I just saw little Dirk is a uh, right. Is, is little Dirk the dude who just got? He's taking that plea deal. No, that's no, G that's Herbo. G Herbo. Herbo. Yo, what you saying? All Chicago rappers is alike. <laughs> All them light skinned dudes look alike. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I like no, Herbo. no, that's. But no, I'm saying what's up with little baby, man. Like, I, I, you know, sometimes I wanted to know other people's opinions because I think. Um, well, let me ask your opinion first before I spit my opinion out. Okay. What is, what is your opinion about little baby situation? Refresh are you me. are you do you not understand his? Do you want to refresh the, the What's situation? What situation are you talking about? The tour? Yes. Him canceling dates? Yes. Well, yeah, he canceled upcoming tour dates. I mean, nobody knows why though. I don't. No, know. No, people know why. why. Don't say people don't know why. So why? Because there's there's low the the, the low tickets ticket is, yeah tickets is, is not selling. Oh, all right. I mean, so so what you don't have an opinion on that? It's it's not new. Artists have been doing it. It's just that, you know people people back out of tours when the sales are low. No need to waste money. Maybe you downgrade and and do it at a smaller venue. But but I think that in this particular case, um, little baby. Currently, is deemed like top tier. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that um, in 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 urban music or hip hop music, I think that they they kind of like even excluded Drake now. You understand? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so when somebody be like Drake, now Drake don't count. Like, it's like Drake don't count. So now it's 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 a a little baby, the little baby. dirt. You would put you would put the baby in there. Yeah, you probably, probably, and that trifecta probably. Like when you start talking about okay, it's I like the baby. Don't get it. Okay, no, no okay. I get you. It's funny. I just had this conversation earlier today. Uh, Rakim Cool G Rap. Uh, Rakim Cool G Rap. Big Daddy Kane. Huh? Biggie Jay Z. Nah. Wait. What? Slow down. 
I'm no, because let, let me let me let me get to let me get to where I'm. But I gotta stop you there because I'm confused. That why? I, all right, Kooji rap, phenomenal rapper. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that he belongs in that sentence. Oh, okay. You have it. You, who would you? Who's your third? I would put KRS One before I will put Kooji rap. And that that's that's fair. That's fair. Right. I would put Kooji. I would not. I would not. But that's fair. An argument can be made for KRS One. That's fair. No, that's kind of like fact. I'm confused. No, that. no, no, no. That's I'm confused. Fair. I'm that's conf- fair. I'm confused. And, and again, I don't. I don't want anyone to take my opinion as law. Mm-hmm. But well, my you just said it's my fact. opinion. <laughs> you just said it's fact. You kind of, <laughs> kind of negated that. You kind of moving the goalposts. I'm just there, saying, right? when, well, as me speaking forward, he, he right? He contradicts himself often. That's fine. Okay, I'll just. This is this is beyond your age range. Don't <laughs> Thank worry goodness, about that. yes, it is. I'm too yeah. young. So listen, to what I'm saying, right? So all right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm confused of what have Kooji Rap done that you would that would that you would name him in those same. Um, words or breath as Rakim and Kane. It's a it's a it's a talent slash rhyme comparison, rhyme equivalent. When it came to patterns, when it came to stories, when it came to bars, when it came to similes and metaphors. So then, why would you put Slick Rick in there? Slick Rick was a storyteller. I give him I give him a lot of credit for being one of the premier storytellers of the genre. Period. Period. Everybody has their strengths. Mm-hmm. And nothing nothing is better or worse than somebody else's. If you prefer storytelling, you're going to like Slick Rick better than everybody else I just mentioned. If you like... Um, if you like style, flash, panache in your rhymes, Kane is going to appeal to you more. If you like God body teaching and a lot of a lot of uh, heavy patterns and, and up, here comes Rod Kim. Crime talk... With the same level of skill, here comes Cool G Rap, talking about the streets, talking about okay. shooting shit up and running down on people and still having stories about it and, and all these grimy hood tales. Cool G Rap, which is why he makes my three, which is why he's he's my third. And that. you took KRS-One out. Well, KRS-One was never there for me, but okay. if, we're, if we're talking about <laughs> if we're talking about the seven most influential rappers of all time. Karis One is on that list, on okay. my personal list. So I see so the, the criteria that you said. I think Karis One has has all of them. I think he yeah, has those sure. crime, those crime raps. I think he has those God body raps, and I also think that he he well, you can't you can't do the that because most of most of his stuff he was talking about. You know, he had a whole album talking about edutainment. Right. You understand Rev- what I'm saying? Revolution as opposed to as opposed to theology. Whereas he would touch on uh, Islam and Christianity and certain fundamentals of of religions, his main thing was revolutionary teaching, um, black black empowerment, health, which is which is a part of black empowerment for most. Well, people. I mean, that's health is everybody. Well, yeah, but okay. it's 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 crucial when we when we start talking about black empowerment, how we eat, how we treat ourselves. Where KRS One is the forefather of. That entire what I would call conscious movement, in and, my and, opinion, and stylish. Uh, every I'm gonna be soup, keep it veal, right? <laughs> I'm saying to you, that's new. when KRS One. <laughs> listen, when KRS One start rocking the big hats and the big Gucci with the uh, the big puffy jackets and different things and the medallions and stuff, people were doing it. Even Big Daddy Kane, even Rock Him, these greats that you speak of, follow suit. Well, they were from the same era, so I don't really give him credit for. I, I never looked at it as giving him credit for for uh, breaking I know, maybe those you styles. Should. I, I, this is a possibility could be. It, it's an argument that could be made, but uh-huh. I would I would argue that he was wearing the clothes of his time, MCM puffy suits, big that, big chains, big. Jo- he so was how wearing could he the not be stylish style. then? Because Kane took Kane took it to a different level as far as suits. I agree. Silk suits, more more of the black exploitation, but modernized for his time. Mm-hmm. Kane brought that into the and and his whole persona can be summed up in three. I'm so smooth, Big Daddy Kane. Everything about it was smooth player, gentleman, gentleman of leisure, who will bust your ass and take your girl. Period. 
Well, yeah, he, with, he, he evolved into that. I think he started with that. Where, I think he started. No, he started because he, he started with Raw, set it off. He and was still like, that guy. Nah, he was still that guy. Ain't no half stepping. Think of the video for Ain't No Half Stepping. Um, Ain't No Half Stepping was like a little bit, little bit down the line. Yeah, but that that was that was who we knew came to be, and that's where where he was. And, and I, I also want to say this to you. This 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 era is a little bit before my time, but I had an older brother. Me too. So my older brother, no, right? He did, me no, too. No, being honest with no, you, no, it's your time. But go no, on. it's not. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Listen, right? <laughs> but my older brother, right? I I I, I listen, <coughs> and when I say, well, I don't know when when certain thing is your time because it's it's weird that do you consider your your era when you were in high school when you were an adult. Like, what do you I consider think your, your era? Is, I think your era is when you came off the porch. So, let's say high school. I agree. I, I think so. So, <laughs> it was not in high school when Kane and these people were out. Right. No way. You know what I'm right, right. No, absolutely This is 86. I'm sorry, you were 12. <laughs> this is not 86. I'm sorry. But I, I had okay. a shout out, shout out to <laughs> Shout out to my older, older brother, Shake. Rest in peace. Remember the Dynamic Breakers? He used to come in the house with all the, all the joints. Yeah, so, my brother did the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, I used to listen. I used to pay attention. I was a kid. You know, looking outside the window, looking at the guys with the radio, mm-hmm. playing these songs, playing the show, Slick Rick, 15 times in a row, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, and I'm from Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn, so from Fort Greene. So Kane, Coogee Rap, Rakim, all these people, Dana Dane, used to come through my mm-hmm. block a lot. So I used to see these guys also. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Um, I'm just just weird that people don't give Chris his props. I, no, I, I did, you, that's not what I did. That's not what I did. You, did, you excluded it, him and you put Coogee Rap. But excluding him from that group, could I could never negate what KRS-One is and has been and always will be. KRS-One, is, a, is my opinion, he, he was the most influential conscious rapper ever. And he birthed an entire lane. Mm-hmm. They weren't there before him. He made it cool for most deaf, Talib Kweli, Common Sense, Dead Prez, Black Thought, Poor Righteous Teachers. Like, he made X-Clan public enemy to an extent, even though they were, like, neck and neck and mm-hmm. kind of the same. But he he opened that up as a solo artist and going from the streets and, and but still talking revolution like Karis. One is... I could never exclude him from, and that's but you why. Did. But when you said he's in that three for you, I no, said, no, 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 no. I, I put him in because, from from my understanding, what I took from your statement criteria, right? Yeah, it was you was doing errors. You understand? Because right. you said you but said I, those I, was, I was moving through, but when you wanted to put KRS one, what was my answer? I said, I, I you said I think, argumentative. No, you I, I said an argument can be made for yes, KRS One. I can totally, uh-huh. which means I can totally get that. If somebody would in, include KRS One, but so KRS- to make me happy, let's take Coogee Rap out and put Chris inside. Okay, now you're gonna see how this you're gonna see how this flip flops because you didn't let me finish. Gotcha. But we'll we'll do it. He we'll has do it just habit because of interrupting of that. people. We'll let him have it. We're gonna do it. a this, super cut. <laughs> this is, this is not a problem. We'll let it. We'll let it. We'll let it rock. So where did I where did I start? Okay, KRS One, Big Kane. Daddy Kane. And, and Rakim. Uh, yes. Right? Okay. Now watch this. Nas, J, Biggie. Okay. The generation after that, Drake, Cole, Kendrick. There's that three. Now the reason why KRS One falls out of line in that in that's because none of the guys I'm talking about had more of a emphasis on consciousness and revolution. Well, you wouldn't think like J. Chris. Cole did? No. Okay. No, not like that. He's more in the conscious frame of Nas and Rakim. He's more in that. He's more in that frame. Rakim with the guy body talk, with the 5% of talk. Nas with the exact same thing, guy body talk, 5% of talk. Here comes J. Cole with a revolutionized, uh, uh, updated guy body talk, 5% of talk. Eat healthy. I don't rock jewelry. I don't, I don't, I don't do these things that you little niggas are doing. I'm just going to teach the youth, uh, you know... When you're on living hip hop, you'll see later on, and when your career starts slowing down, and blah 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 blah. That's how. That's to me. That's very next phase of Rakim Nas. He falls right into the line of that <laughs> for me specifically. Uh-huh. Whereas Big Daddy Kane, for me, he he fathered Biggie. 
He he has direct. I agree with that. He has direct hands on Jay. Okay, that's why I said I agree with that. And then you fast forward that to Drake. Mm -hmm. Drake being a, a lot of people would consider him Hove's son. But especially in place and stature, you start talking about money, you start talking about ex expenses and extravagances. <clears throat> so Cube is not on your list? Where? Greatest rappers. I never, I never put Cube as um, my greatest, my greatest rapper. Uh, that's what, what you call. You must have some nice cologne or something. Oh, I no, never it's put probably Cube. that container of chicken wings, <laughs> ketchup, and hot sauce. So I, on I, your couch. I've never put Nasty. Cube <laughs> as my uh, favorite favorite rapper of all time. Um, I think her argument and I, I it went I recently went viral again because it was. Ice Cube against Biggie. Right. But here, but prior to that, it was an argument that it was, I always feel that Ice Cube, um, rapping wise, was better than Nas. Um, again, <laughs> again, I think the issue Get is him. that we, we live on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So, the impact of Ice Cube probably wasn't as great for <clears> us <throat> because Nas talked to, you know, he talked about his environment and we could know about his environment. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I know on the West Coast, Ice Cube is like hove to, to them. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. You understand? And and if I had to, um, and if I had to ask somebody who's better, Nas or Hove, I, I think more people would say Hove over Nas. Okay. You wouldn't think that? Uh, do I think most people most would Most people, that? I said. Probably. You probably get most people saying that. Yeah, Nas over Hope. So, again... Not not making it... Uh, you, well, you, you just switched it around. You said Nas over Hope. I'm sorry. Hope over Nas. Okay. I apologize. Are you sure? Yo, I love this. You are fact-checking him. I love this. No, you're not fact. You, 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 you are... I'm just, you, making, I'm just making sure we, we that, are that where we right. are. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm so most people would say Hove over Nas, mm -hmm. but now going back to point that she was trying it to make necessarily be right, but most people would say that. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Most people would say. Most people. I would think say that, that anybody over anybody would be opinionated. Facts, right? And I think that um, what what Bianca is is trying to um, prove a point to you is that um, I think most East Coast people would choose Nas. Over Ice Cube. Strictly off of an East Coast bias, you think? Yes. Okay. Now, now musically, mm -hmm. you know, again, I could, you could never say um, to me, you understand that, um, you know, Nas, over, because in, in my <laughs> eyes, um, I've listened to Nas and, you know, two, three albums, cool, the rest of them is like, eh. You understand? And even with Q, you know, just just the NWA body of work was amazing. Okay. And and I'm I'm giving I'm giving him I'm giving him um the whole NWA because from my knowledge, technically he wrote all his stuff. He wrote all Easy E's and Drake's. Ren. Well, I heard. Well, that's why I said from my from my knowledge. From my, well, they from, said they shared. They from, do yeah, share. Yes, yeah, so you, right? you got to uh -huh. split those up. Yes, but we don't know who did what. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah, well, but, we we but we know who we know who did the writing. So it was definitely those two guys. Yes. So you include Ice Cube in in that in that field. Sure. And arguably, that might be top three classic albums of all time. Where. Period. N.W.A. No. Okay. No. Of all time, no. Classic albums, totally. Totally. Okay. Of all time, nah. And and this whole this so whole you would discussion. You put Illmatic over straight out of Compton. Yeah. Okay. But this whole but this whole this whole conversation gets down to criteria because the first thing you said was impact. You said. Well, I never use the word impact, but impact is great. Yes. You said you said okay. You used influence. Mm -hmm. You said Cube's influence over the West Coast versus Nas' influence over the East Coast. If that's part of your criteria, then we're not discussing who's better. We're discussing who had the bigger marketing budget. We're discussing who had who had the bigger who made more noise based on whatever. Now NWA was had a lot of shock rap. 
right? They were talking about things that hadn't been talked about before. Mm -hmm. They were kind of like one of the forefathers of the explicit sticker. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? So did did that make their songs better than than a than something on Illmatic, or did that make it more popular? You talk about NWA. Yeah. Okay. We we start getting in it, and that's that's why these discussions are never like cut and dried because we have to get down to criteria. How are you judging? How it, what 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 are we rating? Are we rating their popularity? Are we rating their lyrical ability? Are we rating their stage show? Are we rating their popularity at the time? Mm. Are we rating their influence over the years? All of these are all legit. Criteria. Well, you could you could put all that in 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 you could put all that. Together and it's like, right? Well, everybody we've mentioned falls into that. Falls into. Not talking about what we mentioned because her her thing was Nas and Cube, right? right? Both of those dudes can make a case for every category I just mentioned, but impact, totally. Come on, totally. Nas had the first. Stop. Not first of all, Nas had the first. Super produced album. He had all the super producers of his day make him tracks mm -hmm. that hadn't happened before him. It was mo mostly one guy or maybe and one the, group yes. doing all the joints. Nas was the first person to have a murderer's row of producers make him the finest beats available. Which was his hottest keep, album. Keep talking. <laughs> keep talking. Which was his hottest album. Which was, which was his highest rated quality album. But the did one that, that, but then, did you think another album was better than Illmatic? No, no. Listen to what I said. Highest rated quality, but the one that went out the gate afterwards was his second album. It was written, which was way slicker, Trackmasters production, a lot of R and B, lot more radio records, and it 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 it, it almost uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It almost like signaled a changing of what was happening. In Nas's personal life too, because I interviewed him around. I interviewed him for the cover of the source. Oh, so that's why you like Nas, because you like personal. You know, oh well, dude, if we gonna go down, if we you can start the, from the fact that I'm from Queens, but I've interviewed Cube too. I've interviewed Cube too. So from Queens, everybody from Queens. So I, I did you just totally skip the part where I said I've interviewed Cube too? Yeah, because that the, the relevancy of that, <laughs> the relevancy of that. Once you said you're from Queens. It's already embedded in you because I feel like like people from Queens they drink the same Kool Aid, the same water, same juice. So it's like you know, it's like give me oh. something that you think I would say being from Queens. Who's your rapper's from Queens? And that's why you took him out and, and you took the Karis one out. That's why I just, I just, there's no way in hell. No, but that doesn't. You can tell me that that doesn't that explain K how Kooji rap has any type of bigger influence, any bigger career, and bigger anything. But, but I than, did. And then KRS one. But but I did. I totally did that. You totally. You I, said, I exactly you said, showed you how that's a thing. No, no. You said that he 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 knew about street rhymes and different things like that. KRS one knew about street rhymes. In he the did three, street in the three, in the trifecta, in the trifecta, the trifecta that I Listen mentioned. Listen to my nine millimeter that's go not, bang. That's not the same. I got a hundred guns, a hundred clips. That's not the same as they got a nigga. New on the York. Run. You didn't know that was Karis one, one, did you? Run. Don't worry about it. I just taught you something. Hello. That's not that's not the same as they have a nigga on the run. Okay, or cop blocking, or any of those. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Can you throw out that nasty yeah. chicken wing leftover? Yeah, like, listen, yeah, there's nothing there but bones and ketchup. He's probably gonna eat that later. <laughs> he <laughs> might. Let, yeah, let, eat let the, the bones. Eat. Let, let the bear rock. I'm just and be an ultra later. Just, just, uh, just, right just let it cook. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm listening. Uh, all right, right. Now, okay. Do we agree on the trifectas that came after the ones that? we have an issue with. The only issue in the trifecta you have is Karis one Cool G Rap being in that earlier trifecta, right? Okay, so let me get comfortable. This is this this may um No, just go with the trifecta that up that because in, in answer to that you question. You said part three. I mean part two, the no, second, no, no, the no, second no, round. No. Cool G Rap, Karis one Rock Him. You wanna eject uh Cool G Rap, Cool G -Rap. and insert Karis one Karis one right? Now, okay, that's the one we disagree on, right? Now, the one that came right after that was who? I, I, Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nas. Before, before this even go, I want an honorable mention LL Cool J. I got you in a second. Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nas. Do you disagree with anybody in there? 
I would I would insert someone else. Who I take out, I don't know. Then, but, then but let me if, tell you. But if you but if you can't if you can't think of who you're gonna eject, then you have to leave it that's where why, it is. Listen, that's why I'm about to answer that. Do you tell him why he cut me off? Huh? <laughs> I I may eject Nas. Okay. Of course. And insert Snoop Dogg. Here he goes. Here he goes. Yeah. And okay. Again, this is this again. I um, I'm talking to you, and, and because even in this room, I I know that you 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 felt that impact. Okay. Whereas some people let it cook. Some um, people we're fine. We're fine. Some people fine. they just know what they heard. Everything's fine. You Everything's understand? fine. Everything's so fine. We're the, fine. the impact of Snoop Dogg. Mm-hmm. The far succeeds most of the artists that's out. You understand what I'm saying? Like the impact. Okay, let's let's go let's go from let's go from yours then. Okay, so Karis one, Kane, Rakim, cool. Honorable mention, LL, please. I'm not I'm not I'm not dealing okay. with honorable mentions. Cool. Okay, okay. Those three right okay, there, cool. All right, all right. Next next round over is you take out Nas and now it's Jay Z, Biggie, Snoop. Cool. Yes. Okay, and then the next round after that. Oh. Yes, this is gonna be. Self, it, it's already too late. No, because because I I it's I already may, too I may late. take a biggie and put Nas in there. It's already too late. Okay, but go ahead. All right, that's cool. You're, it's already too late. That's fine. That's good. Right. Last round. Last the last the last three. Kendrick, Cole, Drake. Yes. Yes. Okay. Audible mention Big Sean. Oh. Okay, what, whatever, you need, whatever you need. Whatever you need. Kendrick Cole Drake, Jay, uh, Biggie, and Snoop, Rakim, Kane, and Karis One. Karis One, right? Now, my main thing with those six, three, six, nine, nine MCs that I've been mentioning is the first three begot the rest of them, right? That's been my point. What do you mean begot the rest of them? In other words, these people's lineage can be found. In the next six, the first three, okay, their influence can be found in the next six, which is what makes them where they are, right? Okay. Now, from that first three, you made me take out Cool G Rap and put you insert KRS-1. KRS One. Mm-hmm. Show me where KRS One has influenced any of the following six. You, I, I heard. Um, well, you said we took Nas out, correct? No, you took Nas out. Yeah, yeah, so we took Nas out. But that put, doesn't really matter because you put Snoop in. Yes. So so now you, you're asking me questions that on the spot. But I, well, I can promise yeah. you, I could promise you, 100%, I could promise you that I could, I, could, I could find things that Biggie took from KRS-One. I'm listening. That, that um, Snoop also, and, um, and I think I just said... I just gave you that I got a hundred guns, a hundred clips. That's that's a line. What we're talking about that is was a whole song. But what you've been talking about to that's me, a line. That's what that's you've a been line. talking to me is impact and influence. Yes. We've already established that KRS One has been the, the modern day, the father of modern day black revolutionary music. Show me black revolutionary music in any of the other guys that followed. Well, you you saying you saying you saying Snoop Snoop had show me where he was black and revolutionary. Well, Snoop. Well, I, again, I'd have to. I have to do my knowledge because it's not there. Yeah, it's one hundred. Let, let, let me let me help you out. It's one hundred. He's, <laughs> he's a he's a crip. Yes, uh huh. He's a gangster. What that mean? <laughs> kind of stops there. <laughs> what that mean? There's been no. There's been no. And it was one was and, 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 one was a, the him and just like they called themselves gangsters of rap. Yeah, but they also they, so, they were gangsters that was their in name. the same. They were gangsters, gangsters in the same way rap. that Malcolm X was. But they were gangsters of in rap in the same way that Malcolm X was. But I'm just telling you, they were gangsters of in rap in the same <laughs> way that Malcolm X. Was. All right, so so <laughs> show me Malcolm X and any of the other guys I just mentioned. He talk about of 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 you Hove. know who I'm talking about. Show talk about any, Z, any of Biggie. them, any of them, well, any of them. Also, let me say this to you: um, Jay Z and and Biggie, they are cut from Kane's cloth. I would, I would, but I would have more of an argument with you. The reason why I'm I'm, I'm planting this flag is because there's way more Cool G rap in in Jay and Biggie than there is KRS One. Way more, 
Way more. No, because again, way more. Again, I, there may not be no no Kooji rap if it wasn't for Karis One. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing that because they. Well, don't do. <laughs> are you switching it? Are you switching? I, I you switch, no, you're that. attempting to switch it, and I'm no, not letting because, you because those because, dudes started in the same era. We're not. We can't even. No, we can't even. Kooji and Karis was a little bit before that. A little bit. What? Like a year or two? Yeah, but but he still was the one that. And let me Kooji do this rap wasn't stuff. talking about anything that Karis One was talking. We don't know him for being black and revolutionary at all. Yeah, but Karis One started out. We know him for being a gangster. No, 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 no. Started out as a gangster. No, no, bro. Saying no, what are you talking about? He was educating people from the beginning. He had a song called 9mm. That was on the no, same no. album as what? Criminal Minded. And what That's was the, the name of his album. Was the cover Criminal Minded. minded. That's Criminal the little gangsters thing in the world. You've been blinded. What a, Looking what a, for a spotlight <laughs> mind yo, you can't what a find gun. He got a gun. He got a gun on the cover of his album. Uh, he also did the Malcolm X pose you know with a gun. Yeah, after a while. After, after, after the second no, one. That was after a while. That's the after very the next second album. one. Yeah, the next one. The very next album. Yeah, that was five years later, though. Which means he was in that vein from the first no, album. No, no, he wasn't. He or, just switched up. he made a complete flip. Absolutely. 100%. He went from being 100% street to 100% revolutionary. 100%. And you can't find anything on that first album that was revolutionary. No, I don't. Not that I remember. No. We, 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 can we pull up the track listing? That's, yeah, I can't wait. Get the track listing. I can't wait. We're fine. We're fine. Everything's yeah, fine. we are. We, we great. This is fine. Every, everything's fine. Everything's I can't fine. wait. Don't, don't, Yo, don't, 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 don't jump, don't jump my ahead. My Wi-Fi work. Don't jump ahead. Don't jump ahead. Don't jump ahead. Let, just, just let him go ahead. Okay, let's go, baby. Criminal Minded. Hold on. Let me look at the, the album. They got, the, the uh, Karis One is holding a gun. Poetry. So Max. Mm -hmm. What was that about? Poetry. He, I, I don't even remember the rhyme. So keep, poetry. You know it's me. Da, 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 I forgot what he said. South Bronx. Mm -hmm. He's talking about his hood. Right? Even though he's from Brooklyn. But you didn't know that. But that's okay. Here you go. Next song is called Nine Millimeter. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right? The next song is Elementary. I don't know. I forgot what Elementary is about. Oh, could it be about teaching? I don't know. I have to <laughs> listen to it. The next song is the P is free. So he's talking about pussy is free. You know but what I'm saying? The crack but the crack costs money. money. So he's talking about street he's not, stuff. He's, yeah, he's talking about the street he's, stuff. He's the crack costs it. money. No, but you can talk yeah. about street stuff that you're he's talking about. He's on the street. The P is free, that doesn't make but the track costs person. money. His next song is called Super Ho. He's talking about he's a hoe. Super hoe. So how is that a gangster? Like, that has nothing to no, do with it. No, but he's saying that he was revolutionary. You can't be ready. You're talking about I'm a super hoe. I'm fucking oh, you, bitches. Oh, you can't? I'm a super hoe. You can't? You can't? That, not if you're you a revolutionary can't? rapper. You can't. Okay, what so, was so, 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 okay, listen pop? real quick. Real quick. Answer my question. What was Biggie, pop? Biggie. Answer my question. Biggie was, was talking pop? about I'm Big Papa. I, I get Where's bitches. The there you the go. There's your answer. There? There's the your answer. Oh, I'm listen real quick. There's your answer. I am listening, but There's you're your... not answering any I'm questions. I'm not talking about the revolutionary part. I'm talking about the super whole part. But that's all we've been talking about is the revolutionary part. I know. That's part. all you've been talking about. So you don't believe KRS-One fathered revolutionary rap? Yes. he turned, But he turned into a revolutionary rapper. Okay, so that would still... That, but, but he started most, out as a gangster rapper. But his most influential time was to as you. a revolution... We this just was, hold on. We just established that. You're no, moving we the goalposts now. You just said that he. We did. We just gave him credit for common, dead press, et cetera, et cetera. You did. And just because <laughs> and just because you're a revolutionary doesn't mean that you can't be hard as fuck. I dead agree. Dead press is hard as fuck. I but agree. But they're revolutionary rappers. I agree. Revolutionary but gangster was the name of their album. Yes, I agree. So that's not a direct shout out and salute to KRS One and that, his that, whole that and what is. he's been. That, but, but that wasn't the, so the question. So show me the had. dead press. You said, show me the dead press and Biggie, Jay Z. I don't know what dead press and Biggie. What you going to write? I'm talking of course, about. Of course, I'm talking about <laughs> KRS One. <laughs> okay, I just gave right. you let's, Super Bowl. Let's, let's stay I'm glad there. I just looked let's at it. But just because he made one album like that, that doesn't mean that it changes. No, he's not even going he down was... the song lyrics. Like, he's just naming the titles no, of the song. You could talk about Jay-Z, too. He spoke about drugs, street shit. Yes. Well, a good portion of his career, and mm -hmm. now he's on some different shit. Like, he's speaking about life and being better. Yes, you're making people. my point exactly. I'm just saying, but... You, not you really. Just... <laughs> not really. She, she's does? not... Yeah, no, I, I see, I see what exactly what he does. No, you're making my point. Okay, so let's, 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 let's start from the beginning. Let's, let's, let's go from the beginning. Because I don't, I don't even want to... Because if I, if I start, you'll say that I'm, I'm bugging. <laughs> you'll say that I'm making up the lyrics. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's do which, that. Which, which song are you pu pulling up now? No, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going for his first album. 
Who? I have a Karis one. Karis one. Uh, I was. When I'm was here right here too. Album. Yeah, Nine millimeter. You, you seem to be. You seem to be forgetting a couple of things. I went through the whole thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was '93. Where's his first album? His first album is, is. I'm telling you what it is. It's '87. Uh, Boogie Down Productions. So that's before Criminal Minded, 1987. Criminal Minded. Here we go. Let's go to the single. Let's go to the South Bronx. Released in 1986. Oh, they won't give me the lyrics on this one. Okay, let's go to let's go to. Um, well, South Bronx. He's talking about where hip hop started. Give it a second. Right? Talking about people shooting, you know, gangster stuff. Okay. You're so in the we'll, park we'll, and the guns flying. Okay. Da da da. So we'll, we'll skip you know, that. We'll, street we'll, shit. Okay. Okay. The bridge is over. He was dissing. He was dissing. So we, uh -huh. we have to negate that one completely. Because that was just a diss track. Can't be revolutionary in a diss track. Just a diss track. Let's find. Let's find. Let me. Let me. <laughs> I haven't had this much fun in years. Let's, um, let's pull the whole thing up. Let's just pull the album up, and we'll just go for the lyrics of the album. It's going to take a second. Y'all can probably do this a little faster, and my man in the corner's already got his phone out, and he's been smirking this entire time. He already knows exactly how this is going to end. Just, I'm waiting, though. It's just, uh, you, uh, it sounds like you like, stalling. No, 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 no like, I, I, know how, I know how long it sound like. Sound like you're I know stalling. how long this is going to take. Okay. I know I can't exactly just put up... You need a hot spot something? Down what you need? I'm just confused, girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love. Let's get to the lyrics. Oh, okay. Well, um, my philosophy. My philosophy wasn't on Criminal Minds' album. By any Don't means Don't fool necessary. the people. 1988. Do not fool the people. That was the second album. Mm hmm Okay, just let so you know I, that. I never, I never okay, said Okay, you did, because no, we were no, talking I, about the first no, album, just, that, then you went to another album. You don't do that. It's a song that just jumped out. I never said what album it was on. You it's said, let's go to out. my philosophy, yeah, which no, is the I, next I'm album. I'm still pulling that up. No, okay. I didn't say, let's go to my philosophy. I just said, my philosophy. You said, let's go to my philosophy. No, I literally just said, my philosophy, and I stopped there. Literally. Yeah. I didn't say, let's go to anything. Fact. Nah, you didn't Fact. like my empanada. I'm not you. That's fine, that's fine. You ain't like my empanada. That's fine, go ahead. Bye. Lyrics. This would be easier if I had my computer in front of me. Oh, Lyric Fiend. Yes, and lyrics. also, I think my philosophy, if you even pay attention to that, my philosophy is kind of street also. And he's... All of his records are kind of street. In the exact same way that Malcolm no, X came No, I'm not saying all of his records are kind of street. He has records that are street. No, KRS One. You put your phone street. down. Why? Because because you you, you keep you keep jump you jumping <laughs> around saying, and I'm trying why to keep you put your phone still because, because you're, you're taking too long. That's jumping why. around. So and trying to why did you put still. your phone down? Okay. KRS One. I'm not. My point has never been to negate KRS One's street. No, you said what influential that he has on Jay Z. No, that's not, not what I said. That's not what I said. I said show me the revolution. Influence no, in you any said of those what guys. You said what influence? What influence does KRS One have? Show me his Snoop. Show me his revolutionary influence in and those guys. It? Show me his revolutionary. And your argument is that he started out street. Yes. My argument is that's not what has been his overlying theme of his career. I agree with you on that. Right. So we why agree are on we, that. Why are we splitting hairs when we know that the over overarching story of KRS One has been his education because revolution, I'm gonna tell you why because if I had influence. to use what she just said about Jay Z, right? Mm -hmm. So now so again, so now somebody says, Oh, I wanna be an entrepreneur like Jay Z, mm -hmm. right? So then that does that negate all his street records that he put out in the beginning? So ghetto, no, um, because or his party records, because exactly. So been, why does that apply to because, KRS One? Because he's been because we would never give KRS One credit for being a capitalist, which is what Jay is. Again, you're 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 giving you're giving KRS One a credit for being a revolutionary. We just did that, exactly. But you can. We I, I agree with that. you, but what I'm saying to you is Jay Z also evolved into two different people. But none of them were revolutionary based. They were capitalistic. Of course, they this is tomato, based. tomato. I, I, no, I mean, that's not tomato, tomato, orange and apples. No, I apologize. no, no, no. That's orange and orange juice. Like, Listen again. He started off as a hustler, drug dealer, yes, making and money. It turned he evolved into, into a businessman, hustler, making money. Yes. That's okay. orange and orange okay. juice. No, so, okay, so now, Karis One started out as a gangster, 
right? Say if you want to use but as Malcolm always, X, but Malcolm had, X was red in the beginning, but always, and then turned to said, "Oh snap, let me change the money, change my ways." But we don't celebrate him for being red. We, we celebrate so, him so do, for being let me ask you a question. El Hodge, so do El we Shabazz. celebrate? Do we celebrate Jay Z for being this entrepreneur? Or do we celebrate him for being the street, the street guy that says I fuck bitches and put them model bitches in the cab? No, we celebrate. Which Jay- one do we celebrate? I'm asking. Are you, you. gonna let me finish? I was just answering. I'm the asking question. you a question though. I'm, I'm just asking. answering the question. Okay, go ahead. I'm we celebrate Jay for being a hustler. So, so not, not about being an entrepreneur. He, a hustler is well, an entrepreneur. Oh, is a hustler. Oh God, here we go. We celebrate Absolutely. Jay for being a hustler. Jay what about, has never what been about, anything what about else little but baby, a man? I'm actually about little baby, man. I don't know why he's canceling. You dancing, you dancing, dancing around a little baby thing, man. You need a show from him or something? You need to come to your show? I don't need why he's canceling. Okay, I'm just asking. He can come to, well, it seems like he's got some time now. He can pull up. I don't know why he's canceling his I'm confused though, because Tiana Taylor was supposed to be like choreographing. And she's amazing. Yeah, she is At amazing. So I'm confused how why he's canceling, but yet if, well, her if the on. tickets if the tickets this aren't is, selling, mm-hmm. if the tickets aren't selling, it, it's it's a it can be a handful of things. Um, and this is I'm just gonna say this straight up: everybody has a run. Everybody has a everyone run. has a run. Okay, everybody's run comes to an end. Mm-hmm. Right, it, it doesn't always happen as loudly as uh, as loud and as messy. As Murder Inc. With, with somebody else pushing you out the door, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and I would argue that Murder Inc. Murder Inc.'s run would have come to an end eventually anyway. People were tired of seeing them win. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would argue that Karis, I mean, Karis, Fifty Cent, I know may he's have been hot. The Don't worry about it. I mean, I would argue that he may have been the catalyst, but that run was gonna. And not everybody has the opportunity to bow out like Jay. With, or maybe the Rockefeller, the way that one came to it. Everybody's run comes to an end. I, my, my, my thought is that because we live in such a, uh, because we are, we're living life in hyper speed due to the internet, can these, maybe these runs are shorter. Okay. Maybe because everything happens in 140 characters and everything happens, you know, Microwave, maybe because of the microwave generation, the the runs that we're used to these guys having mm-hmm. is going to be shorter. And maybe that's no knock to Lil Baby. I don't think his talent went away. I don't think his ability to make a record vanished. I, th- I but but this is just one. This is just one speculation. Time will tell. We'll see. Mm-hmm. You know, history will show us exactly what this meant. The fact that. His tickets weren't. Maybe it's a recession. Maybe he was charging too much money for the price. I, I think or maybe, that. But listen, hip hop. Do you think that hip hop is in a dangerous space right now? Because again, we had no number one album until Little Uzi's album, which we can argue. I don't really call him like hip hop per se. It's more like <laughs> pop. No, seriously. No, I get you. So do you no, think that the well, genre in general mm, is in trouble? Nah, he's hip hop. Don't do that. Who's just hip hop? No, no, no don't listen, do that. Sh- I hate when credit. people try to separate people no, that he's hip hop. No, but, but come I, on, but he's like, no, he's hip hop. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Lil anyway, Uzi called himself a rock star. That's fine. He didn't but he's hip hop. He's hip hop. So I, I understand that, but as far as it, that being the num- the first number one album when Money Bag Yo dropped, um, Little Dirk dropped, like that, I think says a lot because when Money Bag Yo came out in 2021, his album went number one twice. And he dropped it around the same time. It was about May, April. Mm-hmm. It was May. Well, I don't, he I mean, maybe he dropped he it and nobody was twice. around. No, um, everyone was around. Stop okay. it. My B, point to, is, to is that is hip hop in, in danger right to now. An, in to general. answer that question, to answer that question, no. Okay. Because we're a culture first. And Absolutely. Culturally, I think we're doing amazing things culturally. Mm-hmm. I think as long as. As long as Killer Mike can put out an album like Michael, as fire as that fucking album is, if people don't have the wherewithal to go support it, that album still exists under the banner of hip hop. Mm-hmm. That's still a hip hop album. That album is fire. You dig what I mean? I've like, heard. I've heard. As, yeah. as long as, as long I hear, as, yeah, I got I've heard the album, but God. I've heard great things about it. Mm-hmm. And I, I hate overselling shit, but I'm. It's it's an excellent fucking project. Maybe right. I'll ride to it. I would. I I suggest everybody to go give that album okay. a spin because it it restores my faith in culture. I'm not. I can't speak for the industry. I can't necessarily speak for 
what executives decide to promote and what executives decide the youth are interested in or even what the youth are into on TikTok, et cetera, et cetera. I know the youth don't stay the youth. I know at one time right. we were considered the youth. Right. I know we all grew up still loving hip hop. I thought that when I turned 30, I would cut my hair, wear suits and carry a briefcase and only listen to R&B for the rest of my life. And then I hit 30 and none of that happened. Right. And I know that the argument, well, you know, and our parents used to insult our music is null and void because our parents weren't listening to hip hop and we are. And we mm -hmm. have hip hop children. So we can speak to what it's supposed to sound like, what the fundamentals are. We and our uh, uh, my mother grew up listening to Marvin Gaye and and Smokey Robinson. Of course, hip hop sounds like crap to her. Mm -hmm. But I came up listening to when well, I was off the porch. It was Rock Him, thanks to my older brother Kooji Rap KRS One, and then my era. Here and comes, Kane. Here comes and Kane, and then okay. my era. Here comes Wu Tang. Here comes Biggie. Here comes Jay. Here comes Nas. What? Why do you think uh, people forget that big chunk of hip hop? Uh, and when I say that big chunk, you even in your um, in your analogy of of music, the ones the eras that you give, you skipped like a whole big era. And I want to use that era as which era? Uh, I don't I, I don't know what era they call it, but it's an era that was in between Biggie and uh, Kane. So when I say that era, it was uh, Black Moon, Das Effects, Red Man. I don't, I don't, I don't think I skipped them. You, you did. Why I say you did? I, I don't because think because at that them. same time there were there was the Buckshot Shorties, there were the Grand Pool Boss, mm -hmm. there were um, Biggie. Biggie's after though. He's not in the same. Yeah, you can't but, do that. You're talking like Biggie and Grand Pool Boss. Yeah, he's talking eighty nine to eighty nine to ninety five. You can't. Yeah, he's talking can't do that. Biggie and Grand Pool Boss not the same I don't, era. I don't. I don't. There's I don't, no way. I don't skip them. You did because, though. No, I don't. I don't skip them. I'm, I'm naming the most influential, which was the point of those three that I would. Uh, so you. So do you feel like that era? Three. No one was influential. No, I think. I think that era. Stands on its own because you're basically talking about the gold, damn near the golden age. The well, I would, I, 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 co I consider that the golden era, yes, yeah, they consider with, that with the, the tribe, age. the q tips, the um, uh, uh, even the, the, the Raekwons, because you, you didn't put Raekwon or 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 meth in, in any of your what you call it. I think that's that, woo. that's that's after the, that's that's when I came off the porch, that's like the 90 that's after 96. that's after Kane. Those 90, are after Kane. 93, 92, what, what year was Who's that? Who's like 90, 90 to 91, 92? Yeah, like early, early 90s. Yes. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I think that, and I'm not putting the whole woo, I'm, I'm, I'm using Ray and Meth. You know you know why that era is, is tricky and why it barely gets mentioned the I, way it I should? I would love to know because for some reason it, it, we always skip that era. Like I'm looking at her, she's like confused. I'm listening. I mean, no, listen, and when, when I it say comes confused, to the 80s, I'm, yeah, I was too young. <laughs> yes, you understand? But you again, 90s, I understand. no one spits that knowledge of that era to 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 and and that's a forgotten era I, I, of, of hip-hop. I don't think so. More, I, late, more lately, people have been talking I about can't, the 80s. I can't call it. I can't call it. No, we're not talking about the 80s. We're no, talking about the early the gold, 90s. Because, well, because the, they, golden about, age, the golden era. Because they call it, I think I think that's the answer. I don't think it's skipped. I think it's considered the golden era mm -hmm. where there were so, there was so much, oh man, just talking about it, there was so many that's why I think you skipped Snoop. I think Snoop, Falls in that era too. I don't. I didn't. I didn't skip him. I just didn't include him in that group of okay. three. But that doesn't mean like I'm negating these people. Mm -hmm. I had all these albums that you're talking about. Every album that you just mentioned, I had. I still have them on cassette. Like mm -hmm. I still own those projects. Doggy style. On cassette. Mm -hmm. on, name another one. Dead uh, serious. On cassette. The most beautiful you know thing. Yeah. On cassette. Like mm -hmm. as we speak, I have all those projects on cassette now. This guy like, love. He love uh, Keith Murray. Right. Now. Keith Murray's album. Thank I have you. I have those joints on cassette. I think that whole era is considered the golden. What was era uh, Rakim's uh, "Time for Some Action"? That was the name of his album. No, that was, Red was Man. what? Red it was Man. called what? Red Man. I mean, Red Man. That's Red Man. I'm sorry, Red Man. What? The Red album. Man was what? It was called what? Yes. W H U T. Yeah. What? The yeah. album. That was a very great album. Too. Fucking fantastic album. Yes. I still I, on cassette. But people forget these, the, you know, these great classic time time era of of hip hop. And, and and you know, I think when we say the '90s, that's what we mean. 
When people say the nineties, no, because I they always say Biggie Pac. You know, it's like yeah, but that was late. A lot of people that was that was stand out. That was yeah, that was late nineties, and maybe that you consider them the champions of that era. However, nineties period, we start talking about the nineties period. We're talking about early Outkast. We're talking about Tribe Called Quest. We're talking about the Jungle UGK. Brothers. We're talking about UGK. We're mm-hmm. talking about uh, uh, fucking um, uh, what's what's the God's name? Don't do that. What's the God's name? Too short is still outside, mm-hmm. making noise. And, you know what I mean? Like we, there's, there's too many. We can and and there were so many different genres. So you're saying these next eras, it ain't too many. That's what you're saying. Like it just. Woo. I think I think as the business began to encroach more and more, on and then the, the, the greats culture, the greats just started shrinking. They started shrink. Okay. The fact that then we, that might be a great answer. That the reason why that golden era um, isn't. Mentions because it was so many greats. There's too many to mention, and then after a while, it just you know, this era only got two or three. Well, people start standing out more, and, mm-hmm. and you talk about an era that was so full of diversity, versus an era where a lot of people are conforming. Okay. So it's gonna be really hard to stand in, stand out when the majors want you to sound like. This guy who's already selling. Mm-hmm. Well, not just the majors, the kids, the, well, not the kids, the y- young rappers themselves. They want to, all they're doing, I, like I spoke to Boosie for Double XL recently, mm-hmm. and what he said is true is that these, these younger rappers aren't trying to make hits. They're just, they just want to make something that's going to go viral and that's it. So I because think that's the, like a glass ceiling. The goal is the goal's not to be dope. It's, it, but that's what the I'm saying. The goal is they to hear sell. A sound, they're no, like, I, oh, okay, I, I couldn't a, do that. I agree with you. The goal is to sell. You're talking about the right. '90s when the goal was to be dope. Yes. Right. The goal mm-hmm. now is right. to eat, to sell and be real, not be really, really good. Right. The '90s, everybody wanted to be original and dope, which is why Tribe sounds like Tribe, De La Soul sounds like De La Soul, the Jungle Brothers sound like the Jungle Brothers, but they're all in the same crew. But none of them sound alike, which is why Red Man sounds like Red Man, EPMD sounds like EPMD, Keith Murray sounds like Keith Murray. But none of them sound alike, and they're all in the and same Dos. crew. Dos effects sounds like Dos effects, but they're they're all in the same crew. None of them sound alike. And mm-hmm. also, that was a time where people would write their music, right? Like ever since. And that's what Ice Cube started, started on. That's what that's when Ice kids. Cube came out. So he probably was got jumbled into the greats. That's why they forget about you Ice still, Cube. You still had you still had <laughs> um, at the same time you still had uh, oh god, Public Enemy outside making noise mm-hmm. in, in, in that time, and now here comes. Moni Love, and here comes MC. Uh, MC Light is still outside, but now Latif is coming. Queen Latifah. Thank you. Let's you know, mention some females. I was going to say that. Everybody starts. Everybody starts and Bahama making Diaz. moves. You don't oh, know who she is, but salute. you need to Google her. No, salute uh-huh. Bahamut Diaz. Yes, one love. Uh huh. Everybody, Ray, Lady of Rage is outside. Mm-hmm. All these people are making noise, but everybody's doing their best to not sound like each other. Mm-hmm. Which is why boot camp, whole crew full of dudes, all from Brooklyn, all on the same kind of energy. Smith & Wesson don't sound shit like Helter Skelter. Mm-hmm. Helter Skelter don't sound shit like Black Moon. Black Moon don't sound shit like OGC. right? And we loved it all. It was all dope. It was just all fire. Everybody just wanted to be dope. Everybody wanted to be better. I'll bust your ass on the record. Mm-hmm. If we get on a track, I'm going to murder you. You can't, you can't hold my mic in a suitcase. I will body you. Finished. Now it's, I get more streams than you. Mm-hmm. Or I'll really spin the block on you. I really go on missions. I really get at my ops. I really put this up. I'm realer than you. I don't just do this rap shit. This rap shit is just, but in the 90s, yo, I'm better than you. I agree. You can fist fight all you want. You can pop a gun. Any pussy can pop a gun, but you can't out rap me, son. Mm -hmm. You can't do shit with me on on a song. I'll bust your ass. You know, also maybe because we don't have... Those like lyricist lounges and stuff that like make you want to, uh, you know, elevate your skills. But that's what I was saying. These kids, they don't care about that because they just want to freestyle. Like ever since Lil Wayne, like in 2009, said, oh, I don't write none of my rhymes. I go in the booth and I freestyle everything off the top of the dome. Now these kids are, are doing it. Terribly. But they're, but they're not Lil Wayne. Terribly. Right? They're mm-hmm. not Lil Wayne. So talk you about got, most influential. So you you want to talk about influence. Well, I, I was going to say Wayne too. People is everywhere. Yeah, people, <laughs> people always forget Wayne too. His they talent do. isn't, they but do. his aesthetic is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Tattoos on the face, colored dreads. Absolutely. Absolutely. Something in the cup, big baggy <laughs> clothes. His aesthetic is everywhere, Absolutely. but his talent level is not. Mm-hmm. A bunch of people bit. And why? Because they wanted to sell like Little Wayne. Mm-hmm. 
They, they, they the closest they could get is looking like him. Skateboard, rock look, the whole yep. thing, or across the board, across the board. But right. it's it's terrible because they they don't have his talent. That's why I just said, yeah. And like, we negate not Little Wayne. So. This day and age, I think labels, I think artists, and I use that in quotes because I don't think these kids really. My consulting business is full of people who want to be famous, not good. Okay. It's a totally different there thing. Goes right there. You want to be famous. You don't want to be good. Go, there goes right there. My first indicator, and I probably shouldn't even be giving this away because I, I, I shouldn't even tell on myself. But my first, one of my first indicators is when you come to me and you refer to your music as this rap shit. <laughs> no, I'm down to do this rap shit. Uh, rap shit? <laughs> Why would you call it that? It's your music. Well, again, maybe it's because our the, the history... Um, isn't embedded in in the youth. Um, That's also, definitely a factor. I agree. Also, um, people who are older they trying to compete with the younger kids too, so they're not helping them out. You understand what I'm saying? So, and I don't, I don't think, think that, that I, I don't think that I think that the kids don't want help because they think they know what they're doing. Well, maybe if you gave them, I don't know. Maybe if you give them chances, because when I speak to people, they, I, I think they appreciate my input. Now, you know whether. Whether they listen or not, you know, is a little bit different. But I think this generation is the first generation of, um, of the um, what they call it the uh, uh, I, I don't know the word to use, but the um, the reaction of hip hop. So when I say that, meaning, you know, um, you, you know, everybody that that started hip hop or whatever, you know, they didn't they didn't have anything to look back on. You understand what I'm saying? So when I say that, meaning, let's say like a um, a, a, a Kane or um, or even a J. Cole mm -hmm. or whatever, you, you don't know what happens when you super fall off. Excuse me. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, now we know it's like, oh, snap, I see such and such. He used to rap. You know, he looked crazy. His teeth missing, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Whereas, you know, back then you didn't know, you know, you just know they're not hot anymore. But you know, it's not you don't know the the um, mechanics of why uh, of why yeah you understand what I'm saying like mm -hmm. the 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 cause and effect I, I, maybe that's well, the that's, word in, that's intentional I think that's I think that's done on purpose I don't think that's a mistake I don't mm -hmm. and I don't I don't think it's strictly the youth not wanting to listen and I don't think it's strictly the OGs not wanting to teach I think the divide is very intentional I think it's caused I think I think it's put there purposefully so who by who mm -hmm. by by who would it benefit. Okay. Who would it benefit? Maybe. She's the she's the new hot rapper, right? You're the seasoned vet. You've been around. You've seen it all. You've done it all. I'm the label. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. benefit does it? What what does it benefit me to allow you to talk to her, mm -hmm. and allow you right. to teach her all the missteps that you've made, all the mistakes you've made, all the ways that you could have mac maximized, could have, should have, would, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I no longer have you signed. What good does it do me if I allow her to put you on a track mm -hmm. and make you relevant again? But that's why I said with the OGs or the veteran rapper, then I feel like it should be my duty to go and 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 say, yo, let me let me let me spit some knowledge to you, blah blah blah. Here's you know? the problem. And this is the and I work with Buster. I see this firsthand. Okay. Here's the problem. Buster wants you to be good. They don't want to be good. Mm-hmm. They're not here to be good. He's trying to teach you how to make a record, how to how to put it together, how to market it the right way, how to find your own voice and do your own thing. You can't pass that kind of a message to somebody oh who wants God. to be famous. Please put Bust in those those threes. Bust is going to kill you. No, he's not going to kill me. He know, he, <laughs> because he already knows how I feel. We've had this discussion. Okay, I Buss think he. Gonna... I think he's. Well, anyway, anything I say about him, I'm biased, so I I, I leave. Okay, that alone. but. If the goal, and I've seen Busted pull people under his wing. Mm -hmm. Listen, let me tell you what, blah, 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 and start running, giving them all the gems, all the jewels. And if they don't your listen. goal is to be famous, but not through the work, mm -hmm. it's not through it's the not work. work. Busted's famous because of the work. Mm -hmm. Busted got in movies, Busted got on television. Bust is a household name because of what he does on albums and because of what he does on stage. He is purely 100%, 110% a, 
an artist first who then transitioned into everything else, but the core of it is his artistry. The reason why I enjoy working with him so much is because he's hands down the most competitive nigga I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. He heard me listening to Kendrick. He saw me making a stank face to Kendrick's music. He wants to do a collab with Kendrick. He saw me doing the same thing with Royce. He wants to do a collab with Royce. Mm -hmm. Bring me the best out. So I can get and on the track with him. Ass. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, bust the ass. Man, you know what it is, my nigga. <laughs> got to come break bread with the dog. They don't understand. I'll bust the ass. So let me, I want to switch gears a little bit. What what is the most memorable interview that you had on um um damn I'm so sorry. Well, solid. first of all, for people that don't know your background, let's do that first really quickly. So tell us about how you got in the industry. In <laughs> my name is place. Mecca Rashawn. I'm an Aries. I like long walks on the beach. Okay. I'm originally from Jamaica, Queens. And, uh, no, I, I started off as um, an intern at the Source. I using coffee and shit like that. No. Oh. No, I, I was nope. in the back issue, uh, back issue room, organizing all the magazines, just trying to figure out how I can make myself valuable. Mm -hmm. So I created the back issue sales system. What is that? Are you talking about when they had like the the, the, the stuff in the in, the, in the, the back of the magazine? No, 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 not the back of the magazine. The back issues, like the selling the old. Oh, issues. the old issues. Okay. Yeah, you can buy them. Like I set up the prices. I did that. I okay. Was like it actually worked out pretty good because I was I was paying I I the money that came in from that paid my salary at the time. Understood. So I kind of made my job. Mm -hmm. But I was originally like a circulation coordinator. I started off as an intern. I moved up to circulation coordinator. I worked under a guy named Jeremy Miller, who um, was uh, from Oklahoma, which he called the Dusty South. And he put me on the hip hop outside of New York. We used to have super long conversations about what was dope, what wasn't. And I got to hear what somebody outside of New York considered dope. Okay. And understand why it was dope. It gave me a deep appreciation for shit outside of the five boroughs. And from there, started writing. Shout out to Eric Parker. Shout out to Kim Osorio. Shout out to Carlito Rodriguez. Shout out to Gotti Bonanno. Like, these are all people who assigned me stories and, like, actually trusted me to, to do pieces, do reviews. And I got to learn what a journalist is supposed to do, what the rules are, what the standards are. You don't kiss ass. You don't fan out. You don't make friends. If you get cool... That's all right, but you don't set out looking to be the subject of the interview or earn favor with some artist. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. You're here to do a job. And if they like you for the job, that's all right. Which is very different from today. <sighs> I don't ask so why. That's why I don't do it anymore. But if they don't like you because of the job, that's all right, too. It's the exact same thing. Um, I learned from them. The source went through its issues. I got fired. I got brought back <laughs> because they couldn't afford it. Now I got brought back. To, uh, did my one two. Shout out to Ryan Ford. Um, graduated to music editor. Started really writing covers. Really doing like all that real hardcore journalism stuff. Got a bunch of covers under my belt, which was fire. It was really really cool. And from there, you know, I, I it, one of my covers was Buster. Mm -hmm. And it, my, one of my first couple conversations with him. I told him what I liked and what I didn't like. And, you know, I i don't know if you know this or not. Self, you've been around me for a minute. You, I suck at lying. Really bad at it. I, I, don't, I don't think we've ever had the chance that you had to lie to me, so I'm not sure. That's but, probably, well, okay. if I had the chance, I'm not sure how that would go. You'd, okay. you'd probably, but you, you ask me things and you've seen my answer. Mm -hmm. Like, lying is not, it just, I don't bluff, I bad at bluffing at cards like I suck when it comes mm -hmm. down and if you, if you watch the show you see my expressions on my face my like, expert opinion my expert opinion if you watch my expert opinion you'll see the expressions on my face when somebody is annoying me or something's happening I, I'm not really good at not telling the truth I did that with Bus he asked me about something I told him he asked me about something you can't do that with Bus though I can I do and, and he went and and lashed at you no we argue Okay, yeah. We, okay. we argue. He doesn't just, he's yeah, not okay. putting together, putting, I say all that to say it led to me A&Ring, um, me A&Ring uh, ELE2, okay. The Wrath of God, Extinction Level Event. That's one that he had the song with, with the, the, the MOP, you know, that's all right? Yeah, 
Yeah, Zar. Okay. Um, uh-huh. The Zar remix. Zar, yeah. Uh-huh. We, we, I NR'd that album with him. I like that song, too. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we we argued to make mm-hmm. that album. Like, that album that wasn't just like, no, that shit is whack. Okay. That's not how that shit goes. Like, we beefed. Mm-hmm. He stood up on me a couple of times. I stood up on him a couple of times. Like, we... You're right. It's not just like... You skipping over... Then you have, like, a podcast... Like you had a podcast oh, yeah, prior. I've, I've done a ton of things. Yeah, but you're skipping over that. I don't know if you knew he had a podcast. I, I didn't know you had a podcast. Yeah, he had interviewed podcast. him on it. Yeah, that's, that's how, how we knows. did. Uh huh. Yeah, that's had a that's podcast. Uh-huh. Yeah, the Eminem and M show. Shout out to Kay Levine. Um, that was he my, skipped over that. So we, he's been in the podcast field. We went over to Fubu Radio. Media. Yeah, but I got I got all my juice from um all all my juice comes from um Combat Jack. Hey, shout out I mean, Combat Jack one about, time uh, one time for rest in peace. Triple OG combat. Yes. All, all, every, everything I got from that space comes from the pot father himself. So rest in peace, Combat Jack. I think we all got it from him. Talk about influence. Mm-hmm. I know some people was doing their one two before, but Combat Jack put that shit on the map for a bunch of us. So shout out to Combat Jack, Reggie O'Se. Um, I watched how he did his thing. Me and Crystal uh, did the Eminem and M show. We got a bunch of good interviews in. DJ Self was one of them. Bunch of porn stars, bunch of actors, bunch of rappers. Like we were really just going ham sandwich, and it was great. We graduated to Fubu Radio, and we were doing our thing. Shout out to uh, Keith Keys Keo, Kizo um, for holding us down over there. And I think interviewing Math, he got the idea to bring me on his show because I interviewed him for the Eminem M&M show. He got the idea to bring me on my expert opinion. How did that come about? That you two guys. That was from that interview, or I've known Math for years mm-hmm. because Math is one of these dudes who has authentic hip hop stripes, and we used to travel in the same circle. Shout out to EO Dub, End of the Week. I don't know if you're familiar with. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Shout out to End of the Week, the long, longest running open mic. That's where everybody would come to get their chops. If you were an MC, this is where you had to go to get tested. And now you're rapping in front of other MCs who are like, "That was whack." Or that was dope. Like, they're really listening. Mm -hmm. And Math is a veteran of that era. Like, not just battle rapping. He was making songs. So we knew each other from being on the set. Like, I would see him. He would see me. We'd dap it up. He was always cool people. So when he's doing his one-two with my expert opinion, and um, he asked me to come on as a guest. And my first time on the show was me and uh, Austin and Seatmakers. And we ended up <laughs> arguing on that show. Mm-hmm. He got mad at me because of how I talk to up and coming rappers, and he thinks I'm too hard on them. Okay. And I don't care. <laughs> so, um, and I'm I'm trying to do this as fast as possible while I'm skipping stuff. But yes, that was the first one. We had, we had a great report and Talib Kweli. We had a great argument back and forth about ghostwriting and. I said that shit is trash, and he said it's. He said it's. It's okay. It's not okay. It is okay. It's not okay. It is okay. It's not okay. We did that for like. <laughs> sorry, that was super stupid. And I think after that, like you know, me and Math again, we've always been cool, and I've always recognized him for who and what he is, as far as a legend in battle rap, and and you know, a solid solid stand up figure in New York hip hop. Period. Okay. Dig. So, if he's gonna do this show, I think he, you know, I, you'd have to ask him. But it just seemed like one day he invited me, and, and he just, just kept just, inviting me. Uh, you never went home. It, it feels like that. Okay. It feels like that. Like you know, just hey, listen, let's let's rock out. Let's. But let's what see, was the uh, uh, the interview that you was go. like? That's one for the books, and why? I think the first two I mentioned, okay, I the, for me personally, uh-huh. my, my personal, maybe not numbers wise, or maybe not, mm-hmm. you know, maybe but like not, your favorite, yeah, maybe yeah. not for the history of the show in general, like that. That that's a bigger list, but for me, I think the most impactful ones for me was arguing with Talib Kweli over mm-hmm. ghostwriting. That's why, because we were discussing ghostwriting, mm-hmm. and I w- I wanted it to be known how I feel about. MCs with ghostwriters. And you said you don't like it. 
I think you deserve an asterisk next to your name. I don't think you can ever be considered the greatest if you have a ghostwriter. Oh, okay. That's me personally. I And it doesn't take away from anything else you do, mm-hmm. right? Anything else you do as an entertainer, as, as somebody who's like seen as a rapper and is charismatic as you might be, none of that is taken away from the fact that it's not your pen writing. However, I think when we start talking about people who write their own stuff, I think they always need to be in a, in a separate category from you guys who... Well, no, let me take that the other way around. I think you guys who have ghostwriters need to be in another category. Do you think you feel the same way about like R&B artists, pop no. artists, like nope. singers? Nope. So just rappers? Nope. Only rappers. Because it was founded. That's, that's, our, founded that's our thing. Right. That's the thing that we said made us different. Beats to the rhyme. That's what we determined to be the rules of our genre specifically. Mm-hmm. We're the writers. We have the pens. We're the poets. Until Diddy said, don't worry if I write rhymes. I write checks. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. What, what happened, in your clever. opinion, what happened with Heineken and, and Esso? Business. Business business goes a different way. People mm-hmm. don't, you know, people don't see eye to eye on business. People, I, people just, don't see I never really heard your, you know, you because never, I never gave it. And I, uh-huh. I'm, not, I'm not going to today like, okay. because it was between other parties besides myself. Mm-hmm. A couple things I don't do. I don't pocket watch. I don't look to regulate amongst grown men their specific relationships. Okay. You dig? I have absolutely no issue with me, me Esso and Heineken and Math all kind of know each other from the same places, all kind of met around the same time. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Like, for me to sit here and split hairs about who was right and who was wrong in a discussion I wasn't involved in, you dig what I mean? That's their specific mm-hmm. thing. I'd be lying to you if I told you I knew probably more than y'all know. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons I don't speak on it because it's not my business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really not my business. When you fall out with anybody, I know you. Mm-hmm. I may even know the other guy. Do I know why y'all fell out? Nah. Even you, if you would never want to know because sometimes you may not want to go through the same issues that someone else that's in this what's, co- sort of in the same position as what's you. What's for me is for me. Okay. What's for me is for me. I I I've had my share of issues in this business before before this. Mm-hmm. Before before DJ Self invited me to 5H because of my expert opinion, I was who I was. Well, you're not here because of my expert opinion. You're here because you are a mecca. I'm just letting you know that. So. Oh, that's 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 nice. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's 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 cool. And and, and, you, and, know and you and I have always had no issues, right? Every Never. time I've seen you, it's always been good vibes. Mm-hmm. Always been now. I've known Except for you being from Queens and you think Queens is the best borough. Well, that's that's your and issue. And she would say that. <laughs> that's that's your issue. That's not my issue. We, yes, of course the Bronx is the best borough. Everyone okay. knows that. You took a little too long to answer that back. I, it was kind of weird for me that you always pro-Bronx until it was time for you to... Well, because I was born in Jamaica, Queens, so I have a little... I was. I see my influence still I shining. Was born, I was born in Jamaica, Queens, and I lived in Jamaica, Queens until I was seven years old. <laughs> I live right on Parsons Boulevard. Y'all can't see the, the looks <laughs> on the faces around the room, but I wish you could. I wish you could. I was. Oh, I was. man. I live right on Parsons Boulevard, Ooh, right by the I get train. tired of being right. I'm telling you. I just Down get, the I block just from Hillcrest High School. Ooh, <laughs> deep in the heart of Queens. Queens get the money. <laughs> I was. Parsons. But I claim I don't the never wrong. Hear. No, 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 Ever. no, no, no. I am from Brooklyn, Excuse New York. Me. Excuse All me. All day, yeah, every hold day. Hold on. Hold on, right hold on, but I claim. Fall Rock salute. Listen. All listen, day, listen, every day. I go there day. every weekend to the beach. Listen, but I, I lived in the Bronx from seven to my late 20s, so I claimed the Bronx. <laughs> Not snoring. <laughs> Not snoring. Wow. Stop. Es that. Well, what 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 do you feel? Because <laughs> I don't even want to hear this no more. You know what I'm saying? So no, what? I'm trying to play me, yeah, son. Come on, alright, Queens. I, you know, but I, you're, no, right. you're from Queens. Yeah, I should have never admitted that. Yeah, no. Go to Queens, from Queens, like and get nice, the brew okay. from Brooklyn. What I knew, I knew it was something. What I so know. what what do you feel holds for you for the future? Like, what's something that you haven't done that you feel like you want to do? That's an interesting question. 
I wanted to make a group. I did that slaughterhouse. I wanted to, um, I wanted to give an album five mics. I did that Bumby trilogy. I wanted to work with an icon. I did that with Bus. I, I know, like you popping your collar and stuff. That wasn't the question I asked you. I asked you, "What do you want to do?" Not what you did. Such an ass. That that's the that's the fast problem. forward. It gets, it gets really it gets really hard to figure out what. Okay. All yes. Right. Thank I do, you. I have I have some Play. on the list. I want to I want to take an artist, um, from like unknown mm -hmm. to on the map, mm. even if they don't chart. Mm -hmm. like I, I want I want to inject talent shout out to viper records which is a label that is that has let me curate a lot of dope talent and bring a lot of fly people through the door shout out to dot demo who's amazing from the bronx i remember him yeah well, you, you queens now we had established that now <laughs> shut up so. Be, bianca was actually at double xl when i brought uh dot through and she she was one of the first people to co-sign and tell me how dope he was he's, mm. he's amazing Shout out to the Combine from L.A. Shout out to, oh, God, shout out to the new, the, oh, Sha Summers. These people I'm not privileged of, but I, I guess I will. On. Thank you. I appreciate you it. Sha Summers and O'Henny Savant and the rock group out of the West, Johnny Def. Shout out to them, too. Like, Well, how could, how could someone that's that raw talent get in contact with you so they may have the skills to, um, to say, hey, you know, I'm I'm what you're looking for. I put up I put up an email on my on my Instagram. What's on your my, Instagram and stuff? Like? Uh, Mr. Mech, M R M E C C. Super fan, super simple. Um, I threw that up just so I could open up my console because you know normally I consult for like labels and 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 those prices you can't charge somebody who's working a nine to five mm -hmm. and those guys deserve it. I find most artists. Make the same mistakes, which so I, is uh, it, it's it's a, it's a wide range of, but it's all the same thing. Like you're all kind of tripping the, at the finish line in the same place. So on my page every Monday, I do mechanism Mondays mm. where I address things that come directly to me from my consulting business, and I pass those on to unsigned rappers for free on my gram every Monday. Okay, it's like two to three minutes of just what <laughs> I've been experiencing. And how you cannot make that mistake. Mm. Like, don't make this mistake. You're going to make mistakes. Maybe you can skip this one. Okay. And a lot of it's, like, personal, a lot of inside work. Like, you know, be a better leader, kind of pay attention, be punctual, be a professional. These people don't stop taking everything personal. Shit like that. Right? And then for people who want a more in-depth, because I'm not going to charge them what I charge a label, I do, like, I have mechanismconsulting at gmail.com. So hit me up over there. I'll sit down and do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with you. I'll play the music in front of you. And I'll tell you exactly what I think, what changes you need to make, if any, how you can market this. You know, just, and this is all quick stuff. It's like an, I may be on the phone with you for like an hour. But, you know, if it's an album, it's a couple of songs, like maybe producers too, singers too. I'm trying to help. I'm, tr okay. I'm trying to find a way to help. I can't stand out and... You know, post up on a corner and get like a little tent and, like, you know, you, you suck, change my mind. Like, I, I don't want to do that, but I do want, I, I want to, I love this, I, I love this too much to just keep a lot. I remember rapping. I remember when I was, you know, I remember. I, my brother was a break dancer, my other one was a DJ. My younger brother did graffiti. I rapped, I danced, I've done I used to rap too. I don't know if you knew that. I did know that. We talked yeah, about that. Yeah, I did. We talked what about was the name that. Of your rap group? T Mac Boys. Yeah. But before that, I used to rap with uh, Poison Pen. Yeah. And Poison Pen is my oh, yeah. guy. Shout out to Poison Pen. Poison Pen, yeah. See, and he's another one of those mm -hmm. stalwarts that I would like to see go further. That, I, that people people with that level of talent who do to no circumstances of their own don't go all the way. Yes. Poison pin, my guy. Killer Mike would never making put a me and Poison Pin together. I, I promise nah, you. Nah, <laughs> no, Wait, where like... did you get the name for your group? <laughs> Do you know what, what I'm What made saying? you name your group T-Bag Boys? And this is um, happening. You know what? You know, we know why we named us up T-Bag Boys. Um, There's no good answer for this. No, group. it is. We were watching Soul Plane. 
right? Again, and then, this and answer, <laughs> and the whole answer just started, started off terrible. Right? And the white girl was like, Dad, I just got teabagged. And he was like, what you mean? He said, yo, remember when they put the boss in your mouth? I said, you dip and you dip? And I was like, damn, let me put my boss in mad girl's mouth. We the teabag boys, you know what I'm saying? So that's how we got to name teabag. I asked you that question. You know what I'm saying? No, no when answer you that, no but, answer that begins before, with, we were watching Soul Plane okay, is going to yeah. end well. So before, <laughs> before I, I started, you know, my, uh, my, my teabag is, Stuff Yikes! Like, I was, I was, I, I started as a, a purist with, with Lake, with, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Lake Poison Pen. Yeah, you, you got it. Poison People Pen, know, yeah. right? So, you got um, flashbacks? No, 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 Poison Pen, no. he's, he's yeah. like, he's one of like a purist. He's you that know, guy. You know, he, he's the, he's, you know, and um, a lot of people don't know, like I started out under Rockets. I DJ for Most Def and Talib for that quite I some time. That I didn't know. Yeah, I, for I quite some know. time. I was in the era of the most deaf and Beyonce when they were together. Oh, I don't know crazy. if people even knew that. You didn't know that. I, I didn't know. I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't okay. know that you. What? Well, you mean them being together? Or you DJing? Well, I, you said you didn't know how to DJ, but you knew that they were together. Yeah, I knew that. Okay, cool. Why I, well, I had so, heard that, but I, I, okay, yeah. So I was around that time. That was the time when I was DJing for. I didn't. I didn't you know, know Dante. You were, yeah, yeah okay, pretty flocko. Yeah, you got yeah. see those are roots. Yeah. That's a root. So you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. So I did see the champagne get passed over in the in the brew get put down and it's and somebody you know yeah, I saw the difference over from forties from forties to champagne. Yes. You heard when when rappers were insulting people who only had shit on the internet and if you really don't why ain't you signed yet? And, yes. I I, I and now being an that. internet rapper is really the only kind of rapper yes. there is. I was to around be. the non fictions and, and yeah. all that. Yeah, see it's it's, it's different. Hip hop, don't worry about that. Shut but up. remember <laughs> remember how most stuff would show up at Washington Square Park? And free and, and rap and burn it down. Uh huh. Him and um what's my man? I I call him Al. Was it Al or A R? No, you talking about kid. um yeah, you're talking about um oh God, just because I want to say his name. I know exactly what you're talking about, Mr. Cruz. Yes. Um, oh, oh God, he's God gonna too. kill me. And punch and words. And punch and words. He's out there with them right now. Oh, don't, bro, forgive me. You know exactly. I'm trying to get your mm -hmm. name together. But yes, the dude on the other side of him, that's GMS. That's that's like my brother. Wow. From the plague, the white dude with the long hair. Mm -hmm. That's my. That's me and that dude have known each Those other were the for days. twenty plus years. Special brew days. Say night special brew days. A special <laughs> brew. <laughs> I used to love them. Right down the street from, um, right down the street from Fat Beats. Yes, Fat Beats was Fat Beats was um, the place to go to. Also, see, this was a time when everybody wanted to be good. It you had to be good. A, it also, was just a matter of being good. If you were whack, you couldn't survive. Now it's not about being good. It's about being real, and it's about streaming. And those are two, those come from two like very, that. which is a whole different thing right. because you, there was a way to get popular. We knew the guys he's talking about, like the guy I know, we knew those guys because how dope they were. Yeah, I know. We watched them perform and we were like, holy shit, this dude's nice. And they would go on their block and be gods and then come outside and everybody knew him. Everybody dapped him up when they walked through the spot. Most deaf, we dapped him up when he came through because he was a Beast, he can wrap you under the table. Love most there. Still can. But that's where his fame came from. As opposed to, I'm going to get famous and then I'm going to rap. Or I'm going to go viral. Mm -hmm. Not even famous. I'm going to wow. go viral and then I'm going to put an album out. Or I'm going to go viral and then I'm going to put a single out to make some more money. I'm going to go viral and then next thing you know, I'm going to be wearing somebody's clothes and I'm going to be famous. Like, <laughs> Whole different. That sound thing. like a shot, right? <laughs> oh my god! It was. I'm picturing it. I'm, I'm picturing. Like I know who shot. I'm picturing. But yes, the next to answer your question, the next thing I want to do is catch it. Catch somebody take from, an the, artist. from the jump. Yeah, take, I want to want to get somebody, and they could get to you by that email, which is mechanismconsulting at gmail .com. It is not a free service. I'm telling you that now. It's not free. I'm not. I don't have it like that where I can dedicate that amount of time. <sighs> and the only thing that you can right. get free is Mechanism Mondays on that IG, and it's about two to three minutes. Yeah, you yeah. watch, you watch them. No, you told me you just. Oh, I, you, I, you I never, pay attention. You never, I listen. You never watch them. 
I'm going to watch it now. I'm focused. Disrespect. I got, I got, I got some yeah, homework for you. Yeah, it was like, no, I never, I, I never watched it. Like, no, but I got some homework now. I, I'm going to watch the Mechanism Monday. we friends, though. So this Monday, <laughs> we're friends, watch that. though. I'm going to listen to Killer Mike, and then you got three artists that I should listen to that you just said you was going to put me on to. Dot Demo, Sha Summers, Ohenny Savant. So now I have, I have three homeworks to do. So that's what I'm going to do. Voila, magic. Good looking, man. Oh, when this next Busta album come out, I'll come back and talk about it. Little Bust? Yeah, yeah. I probably heard it. Busta played off 40 albums, 40 songs for me, man. Man's hard. Hold on, on, let me play another one for you, man. I'm going to sell with Quavo. I'm going to sell I'm not just maybe saying too much. Yeah, bro, what are you doing? Like, what are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> Make a backup man. Like, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Yo, thank you for coming through, thank man. Thank you for having me, King. I appreciate thank you. it, much man. Appreciate it. And for the empanadas, thank you so You're much. You're welcome. The chicken be empanadas. Good. Be safe. No, there wasn't empanadas. They're called... Patelitos. Patelitos. I'm going to stick to empanadas. We Puerto Rican beef them. patties if you want. Whatever you need exactly. to call them, Basically. they're fire. What about the when, Dominican? When Bianca makes them, they're fire. I can't, yeah. I can't speak for nobody else. She makes them, they're fire. Some of y'all Very be, tasty. Did you have one? Yeah, I did. I ate one. You sure? Yeah, okay. he did. He yeah. dipped it in his chicken wing sauce. Ugh. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's like putting ketchup on a beef patty, bro. <laughs> yeah, you see that? You heard that sound? That's awful. Anyway. We out of here, man.